Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, thanks for joining me again for another watercolor painting practice. As I discussed in my previous video, I'm practicing a landscape painting of a lovely sunset view of Gisborough Priory in North Yorkshire, England. As you can see, I'm blocking out the primary structure and shape of the priory that I'm going to be painting. I actually do use a photo reference to draw this. One thing I do notice about my drawing technique here is that I'm actually drawing a little bit too much detail. While I may be going off of the photo that I'm using, I am still drawing quite a lot of architectural details that will ultimately be covered up with a lot of dark pigment, mainly because the majority of the structure is covered in shadow as it's silhouetted against the beautiful sunset backdrop. So in hindsight, perhaps I shouldn't be drawing this much detail. And if I do continue to keep this habit up, then at the very least, I should actually use a different kind of pencil. What I notice here is that even with my messy technique, the lines are very, very dark. And I suspect that's also because I'm using what I'm starting to suspect as a B grade lead pencil. And that is usually a bit too dark for when you are drawing just base and preliminary sketches. So perhaps what I should do next time is equip my Pacer pencil with a lighter grade of lead, perhaps a HB or even better, just H or 2H, so that I do not have these very, very deep dark lines in my preliminary sketch. This is also important because I started to find that the lead from the pencil does start reacting with the water and the watercolors that I put into the drawing and it starts mixing in with the pigments, leaving this really ugly greenish gray dull sheen to the, the color. And so if I want to make sure that my colors remain vibrant, I should use a level of lead pencil that doesn't leave that much residue on the paper. Now, I'll give you a bit of history about the Priory. It was back in its heyday considered to be one of the wealthiest priories in England. The ruins that we see now in the drawing that I'm making are actually the remains of the final rebuild of the priory in the 12th century. The original priory was actually a lot smaller and it was burnt down uh, during a freak accident. And the structure that we see now was the final rebuild um, before it was subsequently abandoned. Now, as you can see at this point, I'm actually heavily wetting the paper. I predominantly wet the areas that are going to be the sky, predominantly because I want to be able to create that nice, soft, fluffy, blending color effect that you see in much better watercolor paintings. I feel like I perhaps managed to pull it off here, but as you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well, but the pages of the book are starting to buckle a bit under the weight of the amount of water that I've put onto the page. Nevertheless, the page, uh, the paper actually held up wonderfully. It just buckled quite a bit, but as it started to dry, it flattened out again. And I feel like I managed to pull off that fluffy blended look on those wet on wet parts of the sky. And then I used a lot less water on the foreground. I just blocked in a lot of the reflective pigment and then started covering it up with the darker colors of green. As the wet parts of the paper started to dry out a little bit more, I started to blend in uh, colors that I knew would not turn colors too murky. One of the things that I was worried about was using a blue that would eventually mix with the wetness of the yellow and make a green sky. I think I managed to pull most of that off, I do notice that at the top right corner, there's a little bit of greening and murky, muddy colors from a bit of, um, from where the paper may have still been wet. But I think overall I managed to cover, uh, cover it up really well and blend that sunset gradient quite well. Likewise, as the paper dried up a lot more, I was able to put in more solid lines of pigment to delineate the clouds in the background. And overall, I think I managed to do a relatively okay job. It's still not particularly precise, and perhaps I could have gone in with a lot darker and a lot deeper colors once the paper itself had dried. The abandonment of the monastery happened after Henry VIII, poster boy for domestic abuse, most insecure man in the world and winner of being an actual military loser award, I'm not salty, began his dissolution of the monasteries in the act of supremacy in 1534. This act confirmed his break with the Catholic Church and installed him as the head of the newly created Church of England. Again. 
this act was made in order to allow him to kind of legally annul his marriage with Queen Catherine of Aragon, who by the way, was an absolute boss of a queen. Not only was she genuinely well liked by the local English population, she became the ruling regent of England while Henry was at war in France and losing. Meanwhile, Queen Catherine, back in England, was winning a war against Scotland and actually defeated them in a decisive battle in the Battle of Flodden. She was so hardcore about her decisive defeat that she actually sent the cut up and bloodied cloak of the defeated enemy King James IV to France as a gift for Henry, which probably must have felt like some sort of a slap in the face to Henry who was losing all of his battles against France and suddenly he gets a gift from his wife who is competently ruling his kingdom and also kicking ass and taking names. Anyway, annul his marriage with Catherine he did away so that he could be his best friend boy self with Anne Boleyn until he beheaded her and gallivanted off to get himself another wife to divorce or murder. Like I said, I'm not salty. As you can see here, I'm already uh, putting in quite a bit of the darker pigments and like I said, the bluish gray is not mixing very well with the underlying lead pencil of the drawing underneath. So I had to really work on putting quite a lot of pigment to block it out and cover it up. Anyway, history and fate is a funny thing. Henry desperately wanted a son as an heir and went through a plethora of women to do it. In the end, his only son reigned for a short period, followed by Elizabeth, who was considered the illegitimate daughter between himself and his second wife, Anne Boleyn. To add delicious salt to that particular wound, the good Queen Elizabeth continues to be one of England's most fascinating and successful monarchs, whose legacy has left an indelible print on the UK. Aside from that grim historical anecdote, Yorkshire is actually a really beautiful place. I used to also go visit my family in Derby when I still lived in Europe way back when, and I used to find the town really, really charming and lovely, very typical of what we imagine a small English town to be. Um, it was, however, cold, but I suspect that's just me. I'm an absolute wimp when it comes to low temperatures. If it's not tropical heat, I'm normally just freezing. Um, I didn't get to visit this particular priory, but I'm hoping to do so next time I'm able to visit England, so fingers crossed. As you can see, I've already managed to finish most of the painting. I started putting all the dark details onto the silhouette of the church, and as I said, a lot of those details were completely unnecessary and only served to muddy up the color that I was starting to apply to the end of it. Having said that, I quite like the way it turned out. As always, thanks again for uh, watching. I certainly enjoyed the end result. I hope you did too. Um, next painting, I think I'm going to try and draw another portrait. Uh, perhaps I might just make something from scratch. Again, I won't use a photo reference so that I can start really practicing facial um, anatomy without needing to always have to reference photos. Please subscribe and if you're able to, follow me on Instagram. The link is down below and I'll see you next time. Bye!